Glasswire is the ultimate firewall and network monitoring software. Check it out at the link below. What's up guys, CPModdy here back with another video and continuing our storage videos. Today we're here with another SSD drive, but rather than taking a review or a look at this guy, we're actually doing something a little bit different. Now the other day a server came to me for a bit of a service and an upgrade and I did some basic checks and noticed that the SSD on this guy had done more than 700 terabytes of written data in its entire lifespan. Now knowing the lifespan of most SSDs, 700 plus terabytes is kind of getting up there and sort of the limit before you want to start to actually replace the drive if it hasn't already died. And well, I couldn't resist going ahead and testing what happens to an SSD after it's done an absolute ton of work. And well, that is exactly what this guy is here. This guy has written over 700 terabytes of data to it. So let's see how the flash is holding up and how it actually performs in day-to-day -day tasks. Now, for those of you who don't know, SSDs actually have a baked-in lifespan. Every SSD knows exactly how long it's going to last because the flash inside of it can only have stuff written to it so many times. Once it exceeds that amount, it just dies. So a lot of the time it's really easy to work out how long an SSD can last because you look at what kind of flash is being used and you see how long it will last until it runs out of right cycles. And this guy is definitely getting up there and I couldn't again resist the fact that I had something with 700 terabytes written. I really wanted to do some tests. Now personally I actually run two of these guys in my own system over there. I use it for editing and basically everything that I use a computer for. More specifically this guy is the Samsung 840 series. Again two of them in my personal rig and back when the 840 series was actually a pretty popular drive I was throwing them in systems left right and center my server used to run one in it until I took it out and put it in my desktop PC a number of other computers in the house still run the old 840 and this particular server that I actually built all those years ago used to run an 840 series SSD and thus this is what I'm holding here today the drive straight out of the server back from 2012 and back then I thought these drives were pretty good and a lot of the reports at the time said these guys would have great durability and great lifetime. Fast forward again from 2012 to 2018, we see that definitely this has had some really decent lifespan. So if we take a look here at the graph from the awesome people over at the Tech Report who actually did an experiment seeing how long drives will last and actually had one of these 840 series in there, we actually see that whilst there are sectors being reallocated and all that kind of stuff, we see that at 700 terabytes, the Samsung drive is still definitely not too bad and has some life in it when compared to other things such as the Intel 353 series and even Kingston Hyper X drives, which both of them I built with. So, uh, Let's kind of hope the owner's got a new computer before then. But either way, the Samsung drive still definitely has a fair bit and usually caps out at around 900 terabytes written. Now this drive has been used in a server. That's how we've been able to achieve the 700 terabytes of rice span because, well, in a day-to-day -day usage, you're really not going to be hitting that. And we'll touch on what I've got in just a moment, but... It has got 700 terabytes written. The SATA interface is absolutely mangled. The power cable thing is snapped off. It is a really well used drive. Again, this has been used in a server for a caching drive for web applications. So the website's constantly writing stuff to this drive and reading it back out as it is a caching drive because the server was built in a time when RAM capacities weren't exactly as big as they are today. So a small SSD like this guy, 120 gigs, is perfect for just sitting there, running some background stuff and overall doing a pretty good job there. Now, for instance, my 840 series SSDs over my desktop PC only have about 50.5 terabytes worth of writes on it. So 50.5 in my desktop versus 700 on this guy, servers definitely are hitting a lot more. So if you're worried about your drive from 2012 and you're thinking, wow, I must have a lot of reads and writes on it, uh, don't be too worried because a general consumer drive, even one that's been hit relatively heavy for a consumer drive, won't be anywhere near the 700 rating that this guy has achieved right here. Now before we go ahead and jump into some performance numbers, let's go ahead and actually roll back the clock and see what makes this guy tick. And back in 2012, this guy was based on the 21 nanometer toggle TLC NAND flash in sizes from 64 gigabytes. Yeah, that's right. This is from a time when 64 gigs and smaller were still a thing, all the way up to 512 gigs of capacity on the 840 Pro. It's also to using Samsung's MDX controller with three years warranty on the standard edition and five years on the Pro. 
unfortunately, we didn't opt for the Pro, but either way, warranty's still out at this point. We're also to seeing 512 megs of LPDDR2 cache, which is definitely a far cry from today, with most SSDs these days coming out with well over 2 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM for the caching task. So, caching has definitely upgraded on the SSD side. Pricing wise is also to a really far cry from today with the 64 gigabyte model coming in at 100 US dollars and the 512 gig model, so the top of the top line, coming in at well over 600 US dollars. And if you lived here in Australia, you're looking at around probably that $1,000 price point. These guys weren't cheap, but I guess they've definitely lasted the test of time. Now at launch, Samsung released these drives and they should be expected to last upwards of around seven years, as their quote was. And this was because of their switch to TLC NAND flash rather than the typical MLC NAND flash that a lot of other SSDs were using at the time that had been known for more durable and bigger lifespans. However, at the time, Samsung was also to releasing a bunch of other things along with the drive to help with things like longevity and redundancy. So even though we didn't get the MLC NAND flash from the time, it's still backed up by some decent software and let's face it, we could make an entire video going over what Samsung did with this drive, so uh, let's save that for another video. But let's go ahead and start to take a look at some numbers. I threw this guy on my standard 7700K test bench after I quickly did a uh, little test on the uh, computer and as you can see it's going to be fine, but we did go ahead and throw it on the 7700K 1080Ti test bench and we ran all our usual tests. Kicking things off with the crystal disk mark, however, we see that such a used drive actually isn't in too bad shape. Honestly, I was expecting to see some really bad performance out of this guy, but honestly, it's not too far off even my personal SSD which I'm really, really impressed with. I don't have the original crystal disc mark for this particular model. However, if we take a look at the guys over at Legit Reviews who did a review of this guy way back at launch, we see that the performance isn't too far off what we're getting here today as what it was back in 2012. Again, I'm really surprised to see just how good performance this guy actually delivers, seeing that it's written 700 terabytes and it is a relatively old drive. Once again, I was expecting trash performance, but in fact, it's actually still handing up with Really well, and compared to my desktop PC, which has an almost full SSD, about 70 some percent, uh, it's performing about the same. So, if I was to empty my SSD, I might see better performance, but a moderately full SSD compared to a really old one really isn't too much difference here. Gaming also to reflect this with FPS and gameplay completely not affected as well let's face it FPS and gaming doesn't really get affected by storage mediums however load times were definitely on point for an SSD that's a little bit older sure it wasn't as fast as say the 970 Pro or Evo but let's face it, this is a drive from quite some time ago. Even when using it as a caching drive for things like Premiere Pro, scrubbing through 4K raw video was definitely no real problems right here, and just about everything that I did didn't really show too many signs of problems. My 840 that has lasted me for quite some time over on my desktop PC had about the exact same experience as this guy despite it being way older than my particular unit. And this is thanks to the fact that SSDs are much like an on-off switch, they're either working or they're not working, whereas hard drives will start to slow down, chatter, and really get bad performance before they fully die. SSDs are on one day, and then they're off the next day, and unfortunately, because they're all integrated circuits and stuff, there's really not that much you can do to get data off this guy if it does happen to die. So, SSDs, they're on, or they're off, which is really how they work, and that's why performance isn't too bad here. Sure, yes, we did lose some performance, but that's kind of to be expected with any storage medium. It's gonna lose a little bit of performance, whether it's flash or whether it's actual mechanical storage, so overall, not too bad here. All in all though, even after six years and over 700 terabytes written, this guy's actually still performing really, really decently. In the performance department, it's sure a little bit less than the day it was bought, but actually holds itself up to a daily driven SSD that is the same on my system. When compared to the original benchmarks, unfortunately, it isn't as great, but still gets the job done. Unfortunately, however, personally, I wouldn't be running this guy on a day-to-day -day basis, thanks to the fact that SSDs can be a little bit uh, problematic when they do get this age. Sure, on the performance side it was fine, but let's face it, reliability is kind of getting to the end as we've seen in that graph from the guys over the tech report. They start to cap out at about 900 terabytes, and sure, 700 versus 900, there's still a big gap between them, but... 
If you can throw in a new SSD today for a hundred or so dollars and get way more storage, why wouldn't you do so? But it's actually been really cool to see such an old drive actually performing still so well. But let me know down in that comment section, were you expecting this kind of performance out of such an old and heavily used drive? Again, personally, I was not expecting any of this and seeing that 700 terabytes written still kicking around is actually really surprising for me. But again, let me know what you think down below. If you want to pick up one of these drives, I've left the 840s or at least I'll try and leave them linked down below if there's still a link available. Otherwise, I'll just link you guys to the awesome new 870 or 970s rather, really cool SSDs. But uh, yeah, really cool little video. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one. Oh, my God.